portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. 20 years ago, South African hotel developer Sol Kersner set his sights on the Bahamas, deciding to bring a dream destination to life. Today, Atlantis is one of the major draws of this destination with water attractions, marine features, fine restaurants, all wrapped up in a five-star attraction. Tonight, our Kishla Adli is live at the Atlantis as we celebrate, as they celebrate their accomplishments and show you why it's really the best spot for lovers this Valentine's Day. She also takes a look at the 20 years in the making. And Kishla, a few seconds ago, I got to see some Patron, and I think it was Cavassier, um, Grand Marnier. So it sounds like you're gonna have a great time down there. Remember the Grace Jones flyover and the appearance from the King of Pop, the late Michael Jackson? Well, those are some of the over-the-top experiences that Atlantis has come to be known for. It's been 20 years now since uh, those appearances introduced Atlantis to the Bahamas and to the rest of the world. And since that time, Atlantis has been thrilling audiences with this magnificent attraction. Earlier today, we, earlier this week, rather, we sat down with the president of Atlantis, Mr. George Marcantonis. We talked to him about the last 20 years of Atlantis. Legend which came to life 20 years ago. Atlantis, this towering luxury attraction representing the single largest chunk of private sector employment in the Bahamas, has increased staffing levels since 2007 by 60 percent. President and Managing Director George Marcantonis. 8,000 people, approximately 8,000 people are employed at this property. But as we all know, every job at Atlantis also has an equivalent 1.4 jobs in the economy to sustain Atlantis. So in effect, nearly 20, 22,000 people are affected by this amazing mythical world, as we call it. This property, though, has a story of survival of its own. More than the successive phases of development, which stretch from the Coral and Beach Towers to the Royal Towers and Cove, Mark Antonis marvels at the economic bullets the property has dodged over the last two decades. And how suddenly flying and tourism declined. And so Sol Kersner immediately came up with amazing specials that were just too irresistible because we couldn't let this property die with a lack of guests. You move forward to the very sad passing of the, our CEO and Sol Kersner's son, Butch Kersner. And then only a few years later to the stock market crash in the United States, the Lehman Brothers scandal, and the warning from the President of the United States that companies should not be taking business to exotic or offshore destinations and yet we still survive that and I think that's a testimony to the brilliance of the man and the people who thought up what this integrated resort would be and also to the people who've had to maintain it subsequently. By this spring, if everything goes according to plan, Atlantis will face its biggest competition. We asked Mr. Marcantonis his take on sharing Atlantis' mega resort status. You know, we focus on what we do best. We're not going to spend too much time worrying about everybody else. We have a very, very proven business model and track record. That's why we're still here 20 years later. So I don't see Bahama as a major threat. We hope that they succeed in the Bahamas if the model that they have openly discussed, attracting visitors from Asia as well as other regions of the world, actually happens, then I think we're going to see a lot of incremental visitation to the country and that can only strengthen the tourism product. And also, you know, you have to be fair, competition is good. Atlantis Ingenuity continues to take the resort from strength to strength, most lately with events hosting like the LPGA Tours and Division I College Basketball. And they continue to find creative ways to keep heads in beds. When the Lehman Brothers crash happened in 2008 and we lost most of our group business, we lost over 50,000 room nights in group business like that overnight. The ballrooms were sitting empty. We had to be nimble. We couldn't just throw in the towel. And one of our thoughts was, well, we've got these fantastic spaces. What is gonna really lure someone, even if it's just for a weekend, to come to the Bahamas? 
And that's how the Atlantis Live concert series started. And our very first concert, which was Maroon 5, to this day I'll remember it, it with mind-boggling results. And since then we've had just about every major act that one can think of. All right, well, we'll talk to Mr. Mark Antonis later on this week about what the next 20 years will hold. But in the meantime, guys, I have a tough job here. Look what uh, Chef Elson just put in front of me. We're live from Virgil's Barbecue, which is in the Coral Towers. Smoked barbecue, mac and cheese, collard greens, and chicken wings. And he's challenged me to eat all of it, so I don't know. And there are more treats. Here's my friend uh, Kevin. He's one of the bartenders here at Virgil's, and he's going to show me how to make... Uh, Watermelon margarita. Sounds good. How do we do it? All right. First, we're going to have the salt, the glass, to your preference, uh, salt or sugar. Um, then we're going to need um, simple syrup, fresh lime juice. Right. And I'll let you add that tequila and concho for me. Tequila. There's the concho. All right. Just a little bit of water. And you mix that up together. What else goes in there? We're going to muddle. These right here, fresh. It's gonna be fresh uh, watermelon. Okay. You're an expert at this, right? Yeah, <laughs> I do this all the time. Okay. All right. It looks pretty simple for someone to make at home. Yeah. Mm, yeah, you could. Yeah, simple ingredients. You're gonna get give that, that a shake. Shake that up. And we're just gonna pour it right into our salted rim glass. Oh. There you go. It looks good, but of course I have to give it a taste. I know I'm still on the clock, but you know, for the integrity of, of the process deal, yeah. here. Let me just give it a sip. Yeah. And it's good, right. and I'm still standing. <laughs> So remember, Virgil's at the Coral Towers. And of course, look out for the promo code. Go to www.znsbahamas.com and you have a chance to soak in with all Atlantis has to offer this Valentine's Day. Back to you guys in the studio. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. This is your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm Jimenita Swain. Minister of State for Financial Services Michael Alkita stating that at the end of January, the government had collected nearly $11 million in value added taxes. The funds, he said, came directly through customs at the border for the month of January. Recently addressing the College of the Bahamas, Minister Alkita said the government is on track to collect $180 million in VAT at the border. Over the course of the year, he said border officials estimate that they will average about $50 million a month. That was implemented on January 1st. In other business news, the focus is always on creating a stronger financial services industry and recently appointed Minister of Financial Services Hope Strawn plans to continue in that vein. Addressing the International Business and Finance Summit in Freeport, Grand Bahama, Strawn rather, told attendees that the aim is long-term investment for the Bahamas and unblocking barriers to long-term investment where practical. With that in mind, she told IBFS officials that she wants to meet with all of the firms with a view of collaborating and developing a think tank or task force to keep the ministry on the cutting edge. And in international business news, U.S. stocks part their losses today as invested tensions increase over the Greek debt negotiations and disappointing Chinese economic data in stride. Reuters is reporting that a rise in oil prices helped to boost the energy stocks. Investors have been keeping a close eye on the Greek situation, hopeful for resolution and reassured that the market did not collapse over the weekend. That was your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm Jimenita Swain. He's an icon in the broadcasting world, and even to many who watched him transform the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. Today, the former general manager and executive chairman, His Excellency Kelsey Johnson, paid a courtesy call on the executive management team here at ZNS. His Excellency now serves as the Bahamas High Commissioner to Canada. General Manager Diana Swan, who would have been trained by Johnson, said it was important just to say thanks. Um. 
It does me proud to see the accomplishments that he has made in his life as well, having uh, trained under him. And he is right. He took us under his wings and, and taught us taught me a lot of what I know today. And so today was just one way of saying thank you. Today was one way of bringing together our present executive chairman and a former executive chairman, and another way of bringing together a former general manager and myself. And if you worked with um, Mr. Johnson, you would know um, he was a no-nonsense GM and a no-nonsense executive chair. And so we all learned something from him. And I'm very happy that we were able to host he and his lovely wife here at ZNS. His Excellency also had an opportunity to meet his namesake sportscaster, Kelsey Johnson. But Johnson said he was just grateful for the invitation extended to him and pleased by the accomplishments of Mrs. Swan, who said she had her eye on the general manager position from the point she joined the BCB. Current Chairman William Thompson was equally pleased with Johnson's visit as well. And I'm so happy for her to see that today she is the general manager of the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. Sitting here today around the same, in the same boardroom, around the same table, in the same chairs that she, they sat when I was sitting in the head chair. Now she's the person there. That's a great achievement, you know. Mr. Johnson's contribution to Zenith has been one that's tremendous. Matter of fact, he's an iconic figure here at, at the corporation. I remembered my first stint on the board was in 1987, and uh, he was then the general manager. And he taught me so many, so many things about uh, broadcasting that today I can help me in my uh, chairmanship here at this time. For stopping by. I think it was a good time seeing Kelsey and Kelsey together. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the last poultry farm that is still producing in the Bahamas, but officials from Abaco Big Bird say the company could be forced to close down if provisions are not put in place to ensure its survival. Cleopatra Murphy has the details. Co-owner of Abaco Big Bird, Roosevelt Pinder, is appealing to government to offer protection to the farm that has been in operation for some 20 years. He claims it has been a constant struggle getting product on the market as wholesalers who import chicken are essentially crushing local producers, saying they can import cheaply. Pinder acknowledges Abaco Big Bird's product is more costly, noting that the cost of labor in the Bahamas is more expensive than countries like Mexico and Brazil, so the company cannot compete. Which our government it is, they need to set things in place, say, okay, you farmers, or you producers for 10 years, this is what you're going to get. Just think of how many more people would be encouraged to get into farming. But it, it, it's no use to go and say, hey, we need you all to farm and all this stuff going on in Andrus. If when them people grow that stuff, what are they going to do with it? He says farmers will be discouraged if protections are not in place. Abaco Big Bird produces 1.5 to 2 million pounds of poultry annually and usually has 70 to 80,000 chickens on hand. Pinder says currently, the farm's freezers are at capacity. Since Christmas, our freezers have been full. We've had to put um, chicken and tan in our freezers. And as of right now, we, we should be slaughtering in another three or four days. But if we don't move some product, our freezers are full, we don't have anywhere to put it. So then the chickens just grow and get bigger, which then they're not a good market, not a good sized chicken to take to market. The 100-acre farm also produces Persian limes, sour oranges, and six varieties of avocado, which the owner says they also have problems selling on the market. Operations manager Lance Pinder says the farm needs assistance. It is very challenging in the market here uh, with inter-island shipping, because Nassau obviously is the biggest market. Abaco um, uses a lot of our products, but we have excess that needs to go other places, and you run into price issues you know with imported products coming from further south and the founding partner says his biggest regret would be to see the farm he started and that presently employs 35 workers be forced to shut down cleopatra mm -hmm. murphy ZNS network news